I am very clear in a public context that I never say I teach religion because I have learned in my life that that's a conversation stopper. Um, for most people that I encounter in the United States of America, when they hear I teach religion, they hear that as I participate in indoctrinating people in the correct way to think. It couldn't be further from the truth in a French school. That is not what we do. In fact, um, when I say to people, I teach religions, they often respond by saying, oh, wow, that sounds cool. I've heard people say, when I say I teach world religions, they say, oh, that was my favorite subject in college. I loved that. And it's a conversation opener. And that's what we're doing at Friends Schools, is we're opening the conversation, we're not closing it. I'm um, Tom Hoops. I am a member of Valley Meeting in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. I teach at George School, a Quaker international boarding school, and this is the George School Meeting House. For me as a teacher, my goal is to um, create a, an energized, safe space for students to get in touch with their own ideas, but to encounter the ideas of other people in the room and other people from other times and other spaces, either through a text or through the internet or some other device that I share. And I want them to be alive in the present with what's real for them. Quakerism is a wonderful container to have conversations around the edges. I often say that Quakerism is a great religion for people who are entering religion for the first time or for people who are leaving religion. So we have a lot of people who are excited about Quakerism because they've thought of themselves as agnostics or atheists. And then they encounter this tradition that permits that possibility, but also invites exploration of the mysterious and, and doesn't block out experiences of uh, transformational or paranormal possibilities. And then there are other people who've come from very um, doctrinal, creedal religions who have felt somehow um, oppressed or controlled by those traditions. And Quakerism gives them freedom. Great, welcome. So we have a, a tremendous mix within our community, and that's a mix that we also have in our classrooms, because at Friends Schools, the majority of people in the classroom are not Quaker, and there is no expectation that they should be. And more often than not, the teacher is not Quaker either. So what we're doing is we're, we're having a conversation that is possible because of the Quaker ethos of acceptance, tolerance, universality, and openness to the unknown. This is not a situation where there's a catechism or a planned method of instruction so that you get the right answers or the right information. It's, it's quite opposite, actually. What we are doing at a friend's school is we are creating safe, discursive space for people to ask into the sublime, into the mystical, into the beautiful, into the mysterious. And it turns out that everybody has that experience. We've all had dreams. Are dreams real? Are dreams religious? Are some dreams religious? Are no dreams religious? In fact, what does it mean to be a person who is in touch with a dimension of reality that we can't measure or see? It means to be fully alive. So let's talk about that. And at the same time, I am very happy bringing in language of scientific cosmology and what some people call atheism because that belongs in the room as well. So when I tell them that when I was young, I identified as both Quaker and atheist, I see their eyes get wide, like, oh, that's a thing? Like, I'm allowed to be that? Sure, I mean, what are you? What's your truth? And then suddenly I hear a polyphony of different identities around the room, and suddenly now we're talking because, well, I'm Jewish and Christian. Well, theologically speaking, how can you be both? Well, it doesn't matter. Let's not interrogate that question. Let's honor that that's your truth, and let's talk about what that means to you. Which stories speak to you? Which parts of those traditions have meaning for you personally? And why is it important that you honor both of those traditions when you are asked, what religion are you? And let's welcome all of that and stumble forward. I, I say that I want students to leave my class saying, that was fun, because it is fun, actually. It's fun to realize that, that you are having some dimension of reality that you know is true, validated by somebody else. And then you find out that there are rich traditions that offer different narratives, different names, different colors, different stories, different energies to exactly the experience that you personally have had. Wow, that's cool. Now turn to the person next to you and talk about your experience and listen to their experience and notice if there are similarities or differences. And now let's come back to what we were talking about. Maybe we have a text um, 
you know, from the Bhagavad Gita that says something really profound from a couple thousand years ago. And now let's look at the Gospel of John or the Gospel of Thomas even, or maybe we'll look at something from Deuteronomy and say, how does this compare to your dream? Um, what do you love? Thank you for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release new videos every week, and this season we're asking for your support to help keep the project going. For as little as $1 per video, you can become a Patreon partner. Check out the link below me for more details on that. You can subscribe to Quaker Speak at this link here, and you can see all the videos we've ever released to my left down below me. Thanks so much.